Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Today, we're going to be talking about what your bacteria eat. And this is kind of a guide to nourishing your microbiome, helping you establish a really strong microbiome, and helping you understand how it all works. Because most people don't understand how it works. And there's so many processes going on in your body without you even knowing it. But when you do understand it, it helps you to really enhance that and make things better and better, and especially feeding your microbiome. So you are what your bacteria eat. So it sounds like a science fiction movie, but deep within our guts is an entire ecosystem which is affecting both our cravings for foods and moods to get us to eat what they want us to eat. So Sounds crazy, but it's true. Some of the microbes want fat. Some of them want sugar. Some of them fight for nutrients. They do this so they can stay alive and dominate the gut by sheer numbers alone. They influence our decisions by releasing signaling molecules into our gut. And since the gut is the second brain and linked to your immune system, the endocrine system, and the nervous system, those signals influence um, your physiology, your behavior responses, and let's face it, we should all know that we should eat healthier. We all know that. That's not, you know, you got to be living under a rock to not know that we be, should be eating more fruits and vegetables. And so here's the deal. Why don't we do that? Why do so many people um, want to eat foods that are bad for them? And the makeup of your bacteria is a huge part of who you are. You are 99% microbial, more than anything else in your body, more than the cells in your body. You have 100 trillion microbes. And what you feed those trillions of microbes will greatly affect your life, your cravings, your moods, everything. So since our diets have a huge impact on our microbial population in the gut, It's the whole ecosystem. It's evolving on the time scale of minutes. Carlo Maley, PhD director of the UCSF Center for Evolution and Cancer, said, Bacteria within the gut are very manipulative. There is a diversity of interests represented in the microbiome. Some align with our dietary goals, but others do not. Unfortunately, it's a two-way street. We can influence the compatibility of these microbes, single-cell house guests, by deliberately alter- altering what we ingest. According to Mally, with our measurable changes in our microbiome within 24 hours of a change in diet, it will change. Every time you really eat something, it changes. Um, There are specialized bacteria that digest seaweed found in humans in Japan, where seaweed is popular in the diet. These bacteria are unique to them as their mycos adapt and multiply because of their diet. So they have species that a lot of other people don't have of bacteria because of what they eat. Now, you can easily change or manipulate your bacteria, and I see this all the time, within my own life too. One of the coolest ways that microbes affect our moods and gut is through the vagus nerve. This nerve connects 100 million nerve cells from the digestive tract to the base of the brain. Dr. Ekatipins, who is currently the Arizona State University Director of of Psychology, says, microbes have the capacity to manipulate behavior and mood through altering the neural signals in the vagus nerve. They can change taste receptors, produce toxins that make us feel bad, release chemicals of reward to make us feel good, and you can easily change or manipulate bacteria that resides by ingesting things like prebiotics, probiotics, cultured foods. Um, it, It can change if you take an antibiotic or making any kind of dietary change. And this Guys, this just isn't research. This is, I've lived this in my own personal life. I have learned to manipulate my own diet to change my food cravings. So if, say for instance, I'm on vacation, and at the end of that vacation, because I've been eating something different than my normal diet, I start to crave those kind of foods that I was eating on vacation weren't necessarily bad, but they weren't necessarily healthy. And I'll crave them. And I have to reset my microbiome and reset those cravings 
Um, and it can take less than a day to do it. Um, but it depends on how long you've been eating those other foods. I see this a lot with people who are like really addicted to fast food or things like chips or processed food, they really crave them because they eat them so much. And it takes a little while to, to get rid of those cravings. When you switch it, and I've, I've seen this myself, when you start eating more fruits and vegetables, especially green leafy things, um, all of a sudden you start to crave that. And I know you don't believe me, but you should try it. You will see a profound impact. If you just start doing that every day, say you have a salad once a day or some uh, broccoli or cauliflower once or twice a day, you'll start to have a diminished you know, diminished desire for other foods. It will just change over. And you don't have to believe me, you should try it. Um, cultured foods have a huge impact on how you feel and what you crave. And if you combine them with prebiotic foods, uh, foods that are, they're food for, it's fiber basically for your bacteria, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, you'll be shocked how much control that gives you over your life. And it's kind of like, uh, remember the arcade game Pac-Man where the yellow Pac-Man eats his way through a maze of dots? I'm going to relate this to prebiotics and probiotics with your gut. Pac-Man is the probiotic and the dots are the prebiotics. So that makes more sense now. So it's gobbling up those prebiotic fibers and growing and multiplying your good bacteria. So the body, the bacteria in your body, especially in your gut, are like little gardeners. They help to cultivate your health from the inside out, and they absolutely thrive on natural whole foods, um, which are you know certain types of dietary fibers that your body can't digest, but your bacteria love. So there's no nutrient, and there's not nutrients. There's no calories for those fibrous foods for you, but that it feeds your microbiome. So here's a breakdown of these foods. There's things like garlic, onions, leeks, asparagus, and bananas. Those all have lots and lots of prebiotic fibers. And those fuel the beneficial bacteria like bifido, lactobacilli, and they help them to, res they help them to flourish. Now, resistant starch is a type of starch that resists digestion in the small intestine and becomes food for the bacteria in the colon. It's found in foods like unripe bananas that are green, green bananas, cooked in cool potatoes like in potato salad, and legumes. And um, there's a lot more resistant star starch um, foods, and I have them listed um, in an article. I have a whole article about that if you'd like to see that, and that will be in this description. If you click on this article, if you want to read it, you can see that, because resistant starches are very important, um, and, and they, they work very powerfully to feed, especially bifidobacteria. Now, polyphenols, I talk a lot about polyphenols. There are things in found like berries, dark chocolate, green tea. We sell a product um, that's called Simple Reds, and that is a very powerful compound that works to feed um, the, your microbiome very powerfully. It's really good for your heart. It's good for your health. It gives you energy. Polyphenols are a big deal. Um, and I have more if you want to learn more about that on this article too. If you go to the description, you'll see the article. You can click on it and you'll see all that. Now, fermentable carbohydrates, foods like whole grains, fruits, and vegetables contain carbohydrates that bacteria can ferment into short-chain fatty acids like butyrate which is so beneficial for our gut. Um, things like einkorn flour do that very powerfully. And these short-chain short chain fatty acids are so important to keep you healthy. And I have a, another whole article about that too, because that's so important. Now, the bacteria in your gut also feed on dead cells that are naturally shed from the lining of your intestines, as well as the mucus secreted by your gut. Um, and that is a a very powerful bacteria called acromantia. And I have a whole article on acromantia and how it keeps your gut lining intact. But if you don't give your gut lining the foods that it needs, with acromantia, the bacteria that controls your gut lining, it will eat your gut lining. So it's really important to eat those fibrous foods so that you don't get leaky gut and IBS and all those other problems. So a healthy diet rich in whole plant-based foods, um, lots and lots, and you need to have good proteins too, supports your microbiome. Very powerful. And it does it all by itself. 
um, while you're not even aware of it. Although you will be aware of it um, if you eat these foods because then you'll realize how important all these foods are and how your cravings change, how your mood changes, how you have more energy, and it makes all the difference in the world. Now, another fantastic way to boost your intake of prebiotics is by using a powdered supplement like Prebio Plus. We sell that. It has three different prebiotics in it. One of them is inulin. Another um, is frutoleosaccharide. Uh, there's a, there's a, a, a acai tree or is a acai tree. That's there's a, a very fabulous fiber from that tree that's in our Prebio Plus. We've got three very strong ones. You can also use something like inulin. Um, that's great. You can buy that. I mean, they're putting it more and more in, in foods and healthy snack bars and things because it's a fiber. It, it has a little bit of sweetness to it, not a lot, but it's a powerful fiber um, and it keeps you and your gut healthy. Um, and there's also, you know, the prebiotics that these are in powder form, they get them from things like chicory root, onions, garlic, asparagus, bananas. They get it from those types of fruits and vegetables and the fibers from it, and they put it in an easy powder form for you. And since humans can't digest inulin or the fructose and all of these different types of fiber, it passes through the digestive tract and reaches the colon where it becomes beneficial food for your bacteria. And you can sprinkle stuff on your, you know, food or blend it into smoothies. You can also put it into water, although it doesn't mix up very well. Um, and we also use it um, to feed our yogurts because we ferment two of our yogurts, alrutarai and algasrai, for 36 hours to get high CFU counts of those yogurts. And so we give the yogurt foods because it's fermented for so long, for 36 hours, and we give it Prebio Plus or you can use inulin. Um, some people use potato starch, which is resistant starch, and that works too, to feed all of these yogurts and to make the counts of um, probiotics very high. So all of those different um, powder forms of prebiotics is a good way to do it. You don't need very much because they're pretty powerful. So I recommend only using a pinch in your food or um, if you're sprinkling, you can even put it in your coffee because it's not heat. It's not resistant to heat. So they're wonderful options for nourishing your gut. Um, if you, uh, We also have a prebiotic called HMOs, which is human milk oleosaccharides which powerfully plays a critical role in feeding Bifido that supports your immune system. And that particular one, HMOs, you shouldn't use it in the yogurts um, because it's specific to Bifido bacteria. And most of the other yogurts that we make with Bifido aren't fermented very long. So then if you give it HMOs, you give it way too much food, and then it doesn't ferment properly. It doesn't make a thick curd. So when you take HMOs, which you don't have to take for very long, it's one of your most important bacteria, Bifido, but it will make it grow like crazy. So you can put it into your food, your smoothies, sprinkle it on something, or even a glass of water. Uh, you can do that for like 30 days. It's an HMO supplement, and it will quadruple your Bifido bacteria, which most people are diminishing as they get older, or they've taken a lot of antibiotics, or they've had environmental things that have happened to them. Many people have diminished, if they're getting a lot of autoimmune diseases, they're, they're usually their profitos very diminished. And so these are just a few of the things that I, I do to make me feel balanced and healthy, to have the right kind of cravings that keep me, you know, healthy and strong. Um, these little hitchhikers, all 100 trillion of them, these bacteria that live in me, I like to keep them fed and happy because it makes me happy. It makes me feel good. And you must use the science and wisdom of your own life or it just doesn't work. Just try a few things. See how you feel. You are made of 100 trillion bacteria and you might as well embrace them and work with them. It can make all the difference. So thanks for listening, guys. And the bottom line is we all need to eat more fiber because that's what your microbes like. And that's what's going to keep you healthy and strong and your immune system robust. Check out all the, all the ways to feed your microbiome on this article that's attached to the website in the description below. And you'll find a myriad of ways. It's easy to do. You're probably already doing a lot of it. But it's a great way to stay healthy and to feel great and have lots of energy. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you next time.